Hey everyone, earlier this year I bought a Soma Meta Conformer and then I realized it wasn't what I needed. So I put it in a drawer and I planned to sell it until they released Simplex FM in May, which turns this MIDI hub into a four voice synthesizer. So I want to say that I absolutely love this thing and I want to make it clear from both, you know, the intro and the title that this is not a review of some sort. I just want to do like a brain dump about how cool I think the synth is and what it does. I also want to add that I am completely biased. I've been having a blast with this thing for months now. It fits my personal tastes nicely with the harsh sounds that it makes. And I was lucky enough to help alpha test the most recent firmware update. So I am biased. And if you don't want to be tempted to buy something, please don't watch this video. I'm going to start off with a big picture overview of what Simplex does. I'm going to go over the different parameters for each voice on the instrument. Then I'm going to talk about the frequency modulation functions and how tracks can affect each other in a couple different ways. And uh, I think that'll be about it. So to start off, let's talk about the big picture overview. So Simplex FM is a four track or four voice digital synth. It uses FM synthesis, but unlike most FM synths that work with ratios, the voices are actually what modulate each other on Simplex FM, which is pretty cool. Each track is an independent synthesizer, which means that you can play them individually in a mono type of mode. You can also layer them so that one channel triggers two or more tracks, or you can play them polyphonically. There are no effects on Simplex FM, but each track has a comb filter, which is kind of like a delay and reverb combined into one. I'll talk about that more later though. So first I wanna talk about the different parameters on Simplex FM. And you might notice that you need a separate controller to use Simplex FM, both to trigger notes and to change the parameters. I'll be using my OPZ for this example. And even though I have all the parameters mapped to my OPZ, I'm going to be using my OPZ to just send CC1 to one track for now, because I wanna show you um, just how Simplex works on its own without the audio going into OPZ and without all the mappings that I've done. And the whole time I'll have this screenshot from the manual, which should show us which parameter I'm adjusting at which time, depending on whether I make mistakes, please feel free to correct me. So I just initialized the first voice on Simplex FM. Here's how it sounds when it's completely initialized. Let's modify this first parameter on the timbre layer. So that's going to just affect the midpoint of the triangle wave. So it's exactly in the middle, it's just a triangle wave, but you can move it to either extreme and it's going to add more harmonic. So it kind of adds a bit of distortion in a way. Speaking of distortion, let's move on to the second one, which is wave folding. And this is where it starts to get really interesting in my opinion, because it starts to show how simplex can deal with some really extreme values. Because as I go all the way up, it'll just become noise. Same thing going down. This third parameter in my mind is another type of distortion because it's just drive. And it also goes in two directions. Next, I wanna talk about the envelope, which is actually on the articulation layer. So I switched layers by pressing this button, and now I'm going to start modifying the first four parameters, which are all going to affect the envelope. First, we have what's called shape, and so an interesting thing about Simplex is that instead of a normal ADSR envelope, they have this envelope where the attack and decay are combined into one uh, big triangle. And so the first parameter is going to affect the shape of that triangle. Does it start really intensely and then go downward? Does it just have this gradual triangle shape? Or does it start at the bottom and then gradually increase? And then the second parameter, this one, period, is going to affect how long it takes to go through that phase. So let me show you what I mean. Let's make it so that this is as uh, soft as possible of an attack. Now let's change the period so it'll take a little longer. I'm going to also turn off the sustain so that I really exaggerate this effect. So let's go ahead and change the shape again and make it, um, let's make it fairly aggressive actually. Just start off at max and then just taper off. And then again, if I change the shape to being just a regular triangle, 
Okay, so I want to highlight a couple more things about the envelope that I find really cool. One is called cyclic envelope mode, which I'm going to enable for that first track. And what that will do is this is just going to repeat the attack and decay phases and a little bit of the sustain phase over and over and over. Um, so it's kind of like a wobble sound or it sounds kind of like it's being modulated. Here's what it sounds like. So let me increase the sustain a little bit there. So that way it makes it a little less exaggerated. And let's decrease the period so that way we can hear it a little bit more uh, quickly. So that's what cyclic envelope mode does. And I think that's actually pretty cool because then it just can keep repeating that first part um, and you can change the shape and the period of it as well. Once again, extreme values on the simplex give you kind of extreme results. So I don't know if you've noticed, but when I had the envelope period about halfway, it was taking a long, long time to get to its full volume. So let me just put it to an extreme right here and we can hear it rising up. Even though it's only at halfway, it's taking a while, right? I did one test where I set the period to being as long as it could be, and it took two minutes and 35 seconds to reach the full volume. Similarly, if I wanted to, let me turn, let me make this attack sharp again, or whatever you would call that, I don't know. If I change the release and make it as long of a release as it goes, it's just a drone now. So that's pretty neat because I can then go and, you know, change all the other parameters I want. Okay, now we're going to start to get into, I think, the really cool stuff. So each track has what's called a comb filter on it. And I wasn't familiar with that before, so I'm not going to pretend to know much about it. It just repeats the signal, and that's about as far as I can go with my knowledge of that. So the comb filter is back on the articulation layer, and it's going to be controlled by these two parameters. This first parameter or fourth parameter is going to affect how long of a delay there is before the signal gets repeated. And then this fifth one is going to change um, how much feedback there is, how much of the signal is repeated. So let's make it even longer. So this is like almost a traditional delay. You can also enable key tracking on this by turning the delay all the way to its maximum value. And that almost makes it reverb-like in my opinion. Similar to the envelope, at extreme values, the comb filter will also just continue to drone. It stops at some point, I think, but it stays there for a very long time. Now, finally, let's talk about modulation here. So for the first source of modulation I want to talk about is the amplitude envelope can be set to modulate any of the parameters on the first layer here. The middle, fold, and drive parameters, the delay of the comb filter, the feedback of the comb filter, the volume of every other track, the volume or amount of FM uh, modulation that this track is receiving, and then the last one allows it to modulate the frequency of the track itself, which is different than this eighth parameter on the timbre layer. So let me show you a few examples of that. Let's make a kind of longer note. Let's go ahead and uh, let's just make this a sort of, not exactly a drone, but just not, just not as uh, brief of a sound. Let's add some sustain. Okay, so I just turned the cyclic envelope back on on this track. So let's go ahead and set the destination of what it's modulating to the first parameter. And I'm going to set the amount of modulation uh, pretty high up so that way we can definitely hear it. 
I'm going to slow down the attack a little bit, create the, make the period a little longer. What if I do wave folding instead? I could do drive. I could do parameters on the um, comb filter. I could modulate, like I said, the volume of other tracks, which I'll actually have to show later on. Or I can control how much frequency modulation is going on. Or let's look at the frequency of the track itself. So the first example I have here, the bass sound is going to be like this. And then I've got this clucky sound, right? So if I set this to modulate the volume of the other tracks and turn it all the way down, it's gonna be really extreme. I will have this happen the second time so we can hear just the bass and then we'll hear this just absolutely kicking the crap out of the bass. And so even though the comb filter is repeating it, that doesn't affect the volume of the bass because that's not part of the envelope. Okay, so I have the same setup here where the chords track is playing this plucky sound and it's only going to play every second time and the bass track is always going to be playing. But I'm going to set up the bass track so that it receives frequency modulation from the chords track. I'm going to make it really kind of subtle at first. So let's listen to this. So the comb filter still affects it because it's part of the voice that's affecting it, not just like the envelope itself, if that makes sense. Let me show you kind of a reverse sidechain example with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that the bass track's volume is completely off. And the bass track, I also will turn off the frequency modulation. But the chords track is going to change the volume of the other tracks and make it louder. So we'll hear nothing at first. So we're only hearing that bass track while the chords track is playing because this is controlling its volume. Let me do a few other kind of more complex examples. So what I'm going to do is layer two tracks and I'm gonna have them affect each other through frequency modulation. So I will just go ahead and let's just do again C and D, why not? But let me change this sound so that way it's softer and um So let's make it so that this chords track is modulated by the bass track. And I'll make it so that the envelope controls the FM volume. I'm gonna make the comb filter more intense on that. Let's make it so it also um, is modulating itself. For this example, I've set up two tracks, um, the bass and the chords track, and they're just playing a single note and they're both affecting each other through frequency modulation and they both have their comb filters enabled and set to pretty extreme values. Okay, I just set up a really weird and needlessly harsh one where I have this track is now layered, the fourth track is now layered, and it's going to play both a plucky sound from here and then a really harsh drone from here that is going to be frequency modulated by the fourth track, and both of them have the comb filter enabled. So here's what it sounds like.
I also have a fairly brief period on the bass track, which is why um, it's not always releasing at, if I, if I hold it for long enough, it's not gonna hold the release at all because it will have already gone through this phase and there's no sustain. Of course, you can still hear the comb filter though. Okay, so I feel like I barely scratched the surface of this, but I had fun talking about what Simplex is capable of and showing a few of the sounds. It just sounds like something that like the band Full of Hell would use, uh, and I'm a big fan of theirs. So I just really like all the like haunting sounds, all the harshness, and uh, the unpredictability of it. So I hope that you find this helpful or at least somewhat interesting. Uh, there may be some more of these in the future. We'll see. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.